Like, right. yes, it. Okay, so debt, yeah. debt, debt, debt. Um, I if I bring myself back to twenty-one-year-old Samantha, uh, and I think about myself and students around me, some people had student loans, some people had um, credit card debt, and some people ha- were about to get a car loan, and some people had saved up. Um, or received scholarships or financial support uh, and had none of them. So, you know, we might be dealing with people that have all of those or none of those. I guess, what are the different types of debt and what are the pros and cons of each? Yeah, so um, part of my bank career, I spent in collections for a bank where I was, well, let me put it this way. The job was pitched to me a little different than what it actually was, but essentially um, I went in like starry eyed thinking, oh, I get to help people with, you know, and it's like not so much of that. It was more like pay up, we're taking your house. So I've seen the ugliest side of debt. and I'm so grateful for that because I, I saw that part, part before I got into an advisory position where I was actually going to be recommending products um, or solutions that would get people in into debt, let's say. Or, um, I'm really grateful because I've seen how absolutely horrifically ugly it can be. And I'm not saying this to scare people because I know that there, there is already just with that word, I was probably making faces like I cringe when I, I think about it. There is good and bad debt. So it's different. It depends. Um, basically, let's just talk about, because this is really, really broad as well, but there's different types of debt in regards to something being secured or unsecured. So secured debt is your car loan. What that means is, you know, you, we went to a dealership, you got a loan for your car. Essentially, that car is collateral if you stop paying your loan. So it's secured. The loan is secured by that car in the sense that, you know, you're not making payments. We're taking that vehicle. And in Alberta, we might sue you as well. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's collateral in the sense that it's tied specifically to the property or sorry, to the uh yeah, to the property of whatever it is, a vehicle or a mortgage. For example, mortgage is a secured debt because your home is securing that loan. So if you stop making payments on your mortgage and the bank's going to come in and take the house, not that they want to, because let me be very clear, the bank doesn't want to seize your property. It's not beneficial for them. Um, It costs them a lot of money and legal fees and things like that. That's not the ultimate goal for you to get a mortgage and the bank to rip it away from you. That's not what they want or to take your car, but secured property or secured loans. The bank wants you Mm -hmm. to get as much debt as you can and charge you as much as they legally can and have you in (laughs) debt for as long as possible. So it's not like we're out here shilling for the banks. Like Jenny's not working at one for, you know, a reason. Um, But at the same time, they just want that sweet, sweet interest rolling in. They don't actually want, they're not in in the business of owning houses and cars. Exactly. And the thing is, too, just to touch point on the interest, it's it's interesting how many people are signing on the line and they're fine with their interest rate in the moment. And then a year or two later, they're furious. Why is my interest rate this amount? It's like, remember last year you were you wanted this. Right. So it's a contract that you're getting yourself into with dealerships or banks or whoever is loaning you money where you're they'll say we're giving you this money and you're going to in exchange give us this much in interest to make bi-weekly or monthly or whatever kind of payments right so it's an agreement it's a contract um the other type of debt is unsecured so just meaning in the sense that there is no anything like that tied to it however (laughs) it doesn't mean if you stop making payments towards it that potentially those things aren't at risk so for example you have a mastercard you've racked it up and you're not making your payments the bank can take legal action and garnish your wages they can put a lien on your house all kinds of fun stuff so bottom line with debt is stick to your end of the agreement so whatever that is if it's that you you know you're gonna pay this much interest and you pay it bi-weekly, monthly, whatever it is, stick to that. Um, Debt 
and credit scores. So credit score is so important, so important. The way that it impacts your life and going forward, huge. Like I can't stress enough how important it is to strive for a good credit score because it impacts the kinds of interest rates that you're getting, whether you're approved for a loan or not, um, all, all kinds of things. So how do you get a credit score? Well, basically you have to open a credit product. So if you're someone brand new coming in, you would typically have like an NH rating, no history rating, and that's normal. We can justify and go, okay, well, you know, Tim is only 18. He's never had a credit card. This is his first one. $500 limit to get his feet wet kind of thing, right? So what Tim has to do with that credit card now to build his credit is use it. <laughs> a lot of people make the mistake of thinking, just have it. And if I don't use it, it's going to look so good. Look at my self-control. No, it just looks like you have something you don't need and you're not using it and it doesn't do anything. You want to use it, you need to pay it. So options with paying a credit card are you can do minimum payments or full balance payments or somewhere in between the two. Minimum payments are the minimum amount that you are allowed to pay to the credit card depending on how much you owe. This is the never never plan. You will never get out of debt if you make your minimum payments every single month. It's never getting paid off. It's the never never plan. But if you're having a tight month or it's you know some things come up and you're not able to pay off the full balance, you have to make at least the minimum payment. If you make your minimum payments, your credit score is going to be golden. You're fine. So a lot of people worry about that. Like if I don't have enough to pay off my whole trip, yeah, that's okay. But make at least the full minimum payment. Would a, Did you have something it looked yeah, like? Tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Would a decent strategy be to like for somebody building credit or maybe they're like, you know what, I might not need credit ever. Or, and maybe that's, that's good if you're like, Hey, um, but if you want to build credit, maybe getting that smaller, the $500 thing, and then putting your monthly expenses on there. So if you're going to go to Starbucks, or you're going to go to a movie, put it on there and then transfer the money right away over so that it's almost like, um, you know, depending on how many transactions you get for your um, checking account, but you're almost using it like, like a checking account, like you're playing a game and you're like, yes. okay, I'm going to build my credit, but I don't want to just forget about it. So I'll only spend what I have. Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, highly recommend that strategy. You have to be on the ball with it. And thankfully, because of, you know, a lot of, I'm pretty sure every mobile or every bank has a mobile app now. Um, I got into the habit where I'd use my card and I'd use it for literally everything, like $2 Tim's coffee credit, please. Because sometimes with your card, you're getting cash back, you're getting travel rewards, you're getting who knows what, like there's perks to it that you're not going to get with your debit card. So there's a little bit of incentive to use it that way. But then at the end of each day, I was transferring the money from my checking account over to my credit card. Now, um, a lot of times if you're making a payment from the same checking, like from a checking account that's at bank A and you're paying bank A's credit card, it doesn't count as a debit transaction. So this is where we're getting it, checking accounts. Right. It can, <laughs> we're going a can of worms here. So there's uh, there's different types of transactions with each account that you'll need to know which is best suited for you. There are unlimited accounts, but if you're going to use your credit card in that way, you don't necessarily need it to be an unlimited account, but you just want to be careful. If you have bank account with bank A, but credit card with bank C, they may count you making a bill payment to that card as debit transaction. So just be careful about that talk with your advisor, say, this is what I want to do. They can let you know based on their account. Yeah, that would work. Or, well, you might end up paying like 30 bucks a month in service fees if you do that. So talk with your advisor. Um, but certainly that's a really good strategy to do because it's going to, it's essentially acting like your debit card then, and you're building your, um, your, your credit rating, your credit score. People with a bad credit score, it can get ugly because if you're in a situation where let's say your car's died and you need a loan and you have to have a car to get to work, transit's not, transit is not super friendly here in Calgary for a lot of places. So some places you do need a vehicle. And if you can't get that, you know, loan to get a car, well, now your job's in jeopardy as well. So there's, you know, all kinds of ramifications for having bad credit scores. I've heard that a lot of landlords are checking credit scores as well. So even if you've paid your rent 
all the time and it's been every other landlord you had if you're trying to move in somewhere new and they're seeing that you have a low score you might not get in because of that because it's a risk so utilities yeah you yeah. never even if you're kind of quote anti anti debt um yeah. there's there's unforeseen kind of consequences of that so yeah, yeah um you yeah. listen it what is it? Don't hate the player, hate the game to figure out how to, <laughs> how to navigate and the rules yeah. within there. I would say one more thing, October, I think it was 19th of last year, certain stores or not certain stores, sorry, uh, stores can flow through credit card charges um, for MasterCard or Visa. So you now have to like kind of go into the store and make sure that if they're going to flow through, they kind of say, hey, we can add 2.5% for every transaction. Yeah. So then you're yeah. like, wait, wait a minute, I will use my debit card for this kind of store. So consumers, yes. um, students, consumers, we we have to be like very vigilant out there because there's so many yeah. costs. Oh yeah. And that's something like, I mean, it, when you when you think business sense, you're like, okay, well, yeah, that makes sense. Like for example, one of the reasons why Amex is not as commonly accepted is it costs merchants a lot more to be able to have their service. Well, the reason that is, is because people who have Amex typically can get better benefits a lot of times. So it has to get paid from somewhere, but it's important to know that that's, yeah, that's something that, and I haven't come across any stores that are doing it yet, okay. but <laughs> it is something that they're allowed to do. And so that's, that's where you really have to think like, yeah, is it worth it? Because I banked this way my whole life, but one baby little thing changes and I'm not going to do it that way anymore. So I like to tell people, and even with my clients, I'd like to talk to them at least once a year, yeah. at least once a year, just to refresh and check up. How are you banking? What's changed? Has your income changed? Is it high? Is it low? What's your future plans? Like checking in, like when you go to the doctor, you don't have to be sick to go for your physical. You, you go and you get your checkup and you, you're good to go. Right. Um, and again, there back to that, you know, if your advisor is recommending things or saying things, you're like, I don't think I need that. Or I don't like the sound of that. You're in charge. You are the one that gets to say, eh, let me think about that. Or no, I don't think I need that. That's totally fine. The advisor is going to bring it up because maybe they think it's helpful for you. Maybe they think that it's something you could benefit from. Maybe it could be just part of their own sales targets or whatever. And that's a whole other thing, but you ultimately get to decide. You don't go into a bank and something happens. Say, yes, I like this. No, I don't think that sounds good for me. Doesn't, Doesn't mean if you're saying no today that you can't in a year decide, you know, yeah, actually remember you told me about that credit card. I had that happen with clients too, is where they'd say, you know, I kind of thought it over and yeah, I will get a credit card to just, I, I need to book my trip. And I didn't realize and it's like, yeah, you have to have a credit card on file for that kind of thing. Right. So um, you'd mentioned something about people who, you know, are very scared of debt. They don't want to have those kinds of things. It's almost unavoidable. I mean, unless you're going to, you know, marry Jeff Bezos or something and you don't need to worry about yeah, any it. money ever and you're going to buy your house in cash, you need to build your credit rating. And there's nothing saying that you can't have a credit card that you are using responsibly. I had a client who did not want to use their credit card. And I said, fine, cut the card up, have the account though. And they would have their um, NMAX come off of their credit card. And then it was just the account that their NMAX came out of and they'd transfer it. Building their credit score. They're not at a store tapping away with useless, you know, impulse buys, but it's a way to establish your credit. Like, hey, I have this, I can be trustworthy with credit, which is really what your credit score is saying is, are you responsible and trustworthy? Do you keep your end of the contract up? Perfect. So yeah, there's, there's so much more to like, oh. even in, with loans, like fixed rate interest rates where, you know, you're paying this specific amount versus this is a variable rate interest rate, which is going to fluctuate with prime, which we're seeing because prime's gone up how this is insane for a lot of people who were borrowing, you know, low cost on a line of credit. And now prime has gone up and it's a couple percentage points more than what they had initially thought it would be. So it's, there's a lot to it and it can seem overwhelming, but just know that there's help out there for you. And if you don't understand number one thing, please, please, please ask the question until you do. 
like I had one client and I, <laughs> I loved it so much, but he kept saying, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, can we do this again? And I was like, yeah, let me figure out a different way to say this because it is so important for me that you understand what we're talking about and you're comfortable with it. So I could say something like, for example, with the, the tax-free savings account RSP as the house analogy. And that sits with a lot of people. And some people were like, huh? <laughs> no, I don't want a house. And I'm like, but I oh, love great. it. I no, love it. Not it's house. Like, and and you don't have to do it in different. <laughs> yes. And then I literally said it in the most complex way I could think of. And he's like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like, ask the questions because there's so much information and it is important to understand it.